lovely and darling viewers, it's Jen here at Chakra Joy. This time I'm reviewing Gothic Classics. This is volume 14 of the Graphic Classics series. It contains five novels and short stories that have been adapted into comics that all have like a gothic theme to them. There's also a bonus poem in here. Um, so the stories in here are um, I've Got a Pain in My Head, which is a poem by Jane Austen. That's a really short one. Um, Carmilla by Joseph Sheridan Le Lefeno, The Mysteries of Udolpho by Anne Radcliffe, The Oval Portrait by Edgar Allan Poe, Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen, and At the Gate by Myla Jo Closer. They're supposed to all be gothics, but I, I debate the inclusion of the very last story in here as not being anywhere near gothic at all. Um, but the subtitle on this is Five Great Tales of Ghosts, Vampires, Haunted Castles, and Forbidden Love. So if you love gothic stories, if you love graphic novels, or you just want a very quick synopsis of what these stories are without having to go read the entire Mysteries of the Adolfo, which is exactly why I picked up this graphic novel, um, it totally is fun and interesting and a bit dark. They're all black and white drawings. The first one, Carmilla, is penciled in and the rest of them look like they are inked over. Um, so if you're fine with that, but I think the black and white really works well for the gothic creepy feel to them. The entire collection is edited by Tom Pumplun, and I will list all the, art the writers and artists down in the description below because there's like two or three for each of these six stories. Um, I'm going to go through each of them individually and I will put the timestamps down in the description below. So the bonus one is the, the poem I've Got a Pain in My Head by Jane Austen. It's really short. It's literally just a 16 line poem about like having a pain and I didn't really think it felt very creepy or anything. It's a weird introduction. Um, yeah. It's in there if you want to read it. So the first story in here, in, in my opinion, the best is Carmilla. Um, so this is a vampire story and it focuses on this young girl who becomes friends with this other young girl named Carmilla. And like Carmilla is entrusted to her, this girl's family care. The two of them become best buds. A little bit of kind of maybe a romance happening in there. Like they are definitely very close. But the story is also got a mystery to it. There's a lot of death happening. A lot of people are dying in a very similar fashion, kind of evenly spaced out. Um, and it's definitely a bit spooky. And like I said, it's a vampire tale. So guess what's happening? It definitely feels very gothic and very creepy and is probably the best one in here. Um, I love the art in here as well. Their facial expressions, the proportions, it looks very much like the Corpus Bride. The way the penciling and the shading works, like it's all perfect. This one is definitely five stars on its own. Um, and a lot of really creepy, mysterious things. Um, they went into Carmilla for the first time at night when the horse gets spooked. Um, and they're in like this creepy gothic mansion, which is also great. Um, and just also living like that very high life with the opulent houses and the gardens and everything. And it's so well depicted and drawn in here. I love the facial expressions. Um, yeah. And we kind of find out that the same thing is happening uh, before. Like this girl is not the first one who has been befriended by Carmilla and had not great things happen in the end. Um, it definitely gets spooky. Um, the title, the cover picture for this is from Carmilla. Um, so guess what happens? The second story in here is The Mysteries of the Udolpho. This one also follows a young girl, most gothic tales do, by the way. Um, this one is Emily. And she is traveling with her father. Her father dies. She becomes interested into the care of an aunt. Um, her aunt uh, is courted by and marries this mysterious guy. They go to his mansion and really weird things happen in this house and there is a mysteries and like shocking things happening and turns of the tale and this is like a very like twists in the tale and this is a very gothic story in that everything that's happening has like a logical explanation. There isn't really anything supernatural happening but everything is just creepy and weird and off and humans can be the worst kind of gothic story which I loved. Um, Emily does have a couple suitors in here, so there's a bit of a romance to it. Um, we also get all the lavish um, housing and illustrations and the, the fashion and everything. This one's a bit lighter. Um, I didn't really like the pacing in the story at all, though. 
there's so much happens in the mystery of Udolfo that like I think it should have been like a full graphic novel on its own instead of being one of five and one or like it, I think it just needs to be adapted into something bigger I think this felt too rushed I haven't actually read or seen the mysteries of Udolfo I don't actually know what all happens but I am feeling like there are major gaps in this it tries to build suspense and then it just doesn't deliver and um, the story just wasn't well adapted at all. Um, the art is also a bit weird and not, the art isn't really well fleshed out and it also felt like the story really wasn't fleshed out either and so together they don't really work. Um, I don't, did not really like the Mysteries of Adolfo and it takes up such a big part of the story. I think it was like 40 pages or something. Um, it was kind of a chore to get through. Um, not my biggest fan. Alright, next up we have The Oval Portrait by Edgar Allan Poe. This is based off a short story. It is literally only four pages long. It is about this guy who comes to live in, or who ends up spending the night in this mansion, and he sees this portrait and becomes transfixed by it, and he sees this journal where the, the person who lived there before had written notes about each of the portraits that was in this room. And so he looks at the, the description for this last portrait, and what had happened was that there was this painter who got married to this young woman, fell madly in love with her, um, and she's absolutely gorgeous, so he wants to paint her. And he spends so much time and energy in his art and focus on making sure the painting is perfect that he doesn't notice that his wife is slowly um, failing in health. And eventually by the time he finishes the painting, which he describes as being life itself, the bride is dead. Um, it was just a fun little trick in here. I don't think there was any way to shorten that without ruining this, but it was just, it was perfectly done and I loved it. Um, and then we come to Northanger Abbey by Jane Austen, which is more a satire of gothic novels than a true gothic novel in its own. Um, there was a lot of setup in the story before we actually get to anything creepy happening. Um, so it follows Catherine Moreland, who is, lives a sheltered life. She is from a pretty well-off family, but they really haven't been out and socialized a while, a lot, so she goes to Bath when she's 18. She starts meeting guys, and she's not experienced enough to really know who to trust and who not to trust. So she has two suitors. Um, one is Mr. Tilney, and one is... I don't remember the other guy's name. <laughs> He's not worth remembering. I think it's Thorpe or something. Um, he, she befriends both of their sisters, um, and just this whole journey of her getting wrapped up in novels for the first time, gothic novels, and particularly she is reading The Mysteries of Udolfo, and so she wants to live this extravagant gothic story where she's a hero um, and gets to go save the day, and so when she gets invited to Northanger Abney, Abbey by the Tilneys, she is all primed to expect the worst and horrific things to happen, and Mr. Tilney has also read this story, and so he is just like priming her to be spooked. So she keeps imagining weird things happening um, and freaking herself out. But of course it's a satire. Absolutely nothing is wrong in this house. And so it's a, it's a cautionary tale about getting swept up in your um, emotions and stuff. And I do love the fact that it includes one of Jane Austen's like the best lines ever, which is from Mr. Tony and it's, the person who has not pleasure in a good novel must be intolerably stupid. I love it. It's so funny. And um, I also really love the art style. I love the big doe eyes and it's so cute and um, a light drawing and inking and I just I love the way that this looked. I love getting to see Jane Austen's world. I'm such a fan of all her novels. I've already read Northanger Abbey before and seen the movies so I was getting to like experience that in graphic novel form and I think it did a really good job of adapting that. The last one is At the Gate which I was not prepared to deal with. Um, this one is about a dog that dies and passes over into the afterlife and his journey and experience meeting all these other dogs and what it's like for them and I cannot rate this at all or have any because my cat died last week. <laughs> this is like the worst story for me to have read. Um, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. That's in here. I also felt like it wasn't gothic at all. It's all about the afterlife. It's a bit lighter. It's cheerier. And I feel like if you were trying to end the story, this collection, on a cheery note, you should have just stuck with Northanger Abbey with that, oh, nothing, none of it was really happening and she gets buried at the end. You didn't really need to include the story at all. It doesn't really fit the collection. So, 
it's a mixed bag. Some of these I loved, some of them didn't hit right. Um, basically, Carmilla, the Oval Portrait, and Northanger Abbey were amazing, whereas I've got a pain in, I have a pain in my head. Um, the Mysteries of Adolfo and At the Gate were not great. So, on the whole, I ended up giving this four stars just because it was a good spooky Halloween story. Most of these did actually have some creepy factor to them. Um, Carmilla definitely was creepy, and even Northanger Abbey spent enough time building up the suspense that even though they all ended up being that thing, like, you could see how Catherine was also getting freaked out and spooked and fully prepared for that. Um, so. There's my review for Gothic Classics. Let me know in the comments below if you've read this and what you thought of it. What are your favorite graphic? Do you have any other graphic novel or comic adaptations of good Halloween stories that I should be reading? And I'll post link to, links to similar graphic novels down in the description below. Like I've recently read The Haunted Mansion and Dead Man, Mansion of Forbidden Love, which were awesomely creepy and ghosty and fun. Yeah. Peace out. I love you guys. Keep reading and happy Halloween. Bye.